Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is the Geometry Unit, Lesson 1, Angle Relationships and Parallel Lines. After this lesson, you need to be able to use the relationships between angles to find the measures of missing angles. Let's learn lines, angles, and transversals. Pairs of angles can be classified by their relationship to each other. A special case occurs when two lines intersect in a plane to form a right angle. These lines are perpendicular lines. Special notation is used to indicate perpendicular lines. We would read L with this little symbol M as line L is perpendicular to line M. If we look at the picture here, we can see a couple ways that perpendicular lines are expressed. So one, it might have a little box there indicating it's a right angle that will help show that things are perpendicular, or we might see, as they showed us with that symbol before, perpendicular. If we see one or the other, then we can fill in missing information. So if we see the symbol, we could always, on our picture, put in a box to show that it is a right angle. But it's going to be important to remember that perpendicular lines form a right angle, which is 90 degrees. Two lines in a plane that never intersect are called parallel lines. A line that intersects two or more other lines in a plane is called a transversal. Special notation is used to indicate parallel lines. So here we would have this symbol with two lines that almost looks like two L's, but that is read as line S is parallel to line T. So with parallel lines, we can see we're gonna be looking for that indication. Most of the problems in this section are gonna be dealing with parallel lines. We can also see there are some arrowheads that are kind of in the middle of the line. Those are used to indicate parallel lines. And then a line that crosses two or more lines, such as line R here, that is called a transversal. And we are going to be using parallel lines and transversals quite a bit in the next few examples. When a transversal intersects two parallel lines, eight angles are formed. Four of the angles are interior angles. So here we can see we have four, three, five, and six. They are interior because they are between or inside the parallel lines. So here are examples. We have three, four, five, and six. Those are the ones that are inside the parallel lines. Exterior angles also with a transversal and parallel lines, are outside our two parallel lines. Here we have angles one and two, and seven and eight. Those are the angles on the transversal that are outside of the parallel lines. When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, there's a relationship between the angles that are created. The angles in certain angle pairs alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and corresponding angles have the same angle measure. And we'll see what those are in just a minute. Special notation is used to indicate the measure of an angle. So if you see an M out front of an angle, you would read that as the measure M, so measure of angle one. Now let's look at those angle relationships a little closer. The first one is alternate interior angles. So the key here, they are interior, so inside our parallel lines, that are on opposite sides of the transversal. So for example, four and six, they are inside the parallel but opposite sides of that transversal line. If we are dealing with parallel lines, then those measures are equal, which is why this is a special relationship. The measure of angle 4 and the measure of angle 6 are equal. The same goes with the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 5. Those are also equal. Alternate exterior angles follow a similar type of thinking. This time, though, they are exterior, so outside the parallel, but the ones on opposite sides of the transversal are equal. So angle 1 is equal to angle seven, 
And the measure for angle 2 is equal to the measure for angle 8. Knowing these relationships for alternate interior and for alternate exterior angles can help us to find missing things, since we know that it is equal to its pair. Another type of relationship that can form are corresponding angles. These are angles that are in the same position in relation to the transversal. If it's with parallel lines, their measure is also equal. So we can see angle 1 is in the same position as angle 5. They're both in that kind of top left corner of where the transversal crosses the parallel lines. They have equal measures. Same with angle 2 and angle 6, angle 3, angle 7, they're in the same position. So angle 4 would have the same measure as angle Eight. And one thing that's important to remember about the three angle relationships we just looked at, the transversal needs to cross parallel lines. If the lines are not parallel, then those relationships are no longer true. So be on the lookout for parallel lines. Example one, classify angle pairs. Classify the relationship between angle one and angle seven as alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding. So our first step here, we need to figure out where angles 1 and 7 are located. I have 1 is there, 7 is there. I'm going to eliminate corresponding right away. They are not in the same position, that top left corner of our transversal, not corresponding. So are they alternate interior or alternate exterior? Well, they lie outside are parallel lines. So they are exterior and they're on opposite sides of that transversal. One's on the left, one's on the right. That would be alternate exterior angles. Check your understanding. Looking at the picture and using the description that is given, classify the relationship between angle two and angle four. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said angles 2 and 4 are corresponding. They are in that same position in relation to the transversal. Here it's the top right corner. And since they're in the same position, that is corresponding. Example 2. Classify angle pairs. Classify the relationship between angle 2 and angle 6 in the figure as alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding. So again, let's find angle 2, let's find angle 6. Here I can see they are on the same side of the transversal. They're both on the right side there. And I can see that they are in the same position in relation to the transversal. So these must be corresponding angles. Check your understanding again. Looking at the picture, decide if angles 4 and 5 are alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This time they are alternate exterior angles. We have angle four over here, angle five over here. The parallel lines are turned, so we need to look at those parallel lines. They are on the outsides of the parallel, but opposite sides of the transversal. They are alternate exterior angles. Let's learn. Find missing angle measures. When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, eight angles are formed. Special relationships exist among the pairs of angles, and we just saw three of those angle relationships. Complete the missing angle measures in the table. So here they gave us some angles. I'm going to take what they gave us and write it on my picture. So angle 1 is 105, angle 2 is 75, angle 3 is 75, and angle 4 is 105. By filling in on the picture, now I can see and use those angle relationships to fill in things that are missing. And I can use any of the three. So for example, I know that angle 1 is 105. If I wanted to figure out angle 5, 
which is a corresponding angle because they're in the same position, I would now know those angles are equal, so that one is also 105 degrees. I could use the same process for, say, angle 2 and angle 6 to come up with 6 being 75, or I could always use alternate interior angles. And since I know angle 3 is 75, then angle 6 must also be 75. So there was more than one way of coming up with the same missing angle measure. And we can use whatever we're comfortable with as long as it's working. Angle 7 would be corresponding to angle 3, or alternate exterior with angle 2, so it's also 75. And then finally, angle 8, I'm going to use alternate exterior with number 1, and I'm going to say that that is 105 degrees. Notice there is a pattern in the numbers when we're dealing with a transversal of parallel lines. If you know the measure of one angle, you can also use your knowledge of supplementary and vertical angles, which you should have learned about in seventh grade, to find the angle measures of the three angles along the same line. Now, as a quick review, supplementary means that it adds up to 180 degrees whereas vertical means that the angles are directly across from each other using the same two lines, and those angles are equal. So if we're going through this, suppose the measure of angle one is 50 degrees. If we wanna figure out angle two, we know that this has to be 130 degrees because angles one and two are supplementary. Those two add up to 180 degrees. I can find angle three, and I know that it's 50 degrees because angles one and angle three are vertical angles. They are directly across from each other. And then I can also figure out angle four, and I know that it's 130 because angle one and angle four are also supplementary. If I wanted, once I figured out angle two, I could use vertical angles and go across and also say that it's 130. Again, there is more than one way to get the correct angle measure. Use what you know about angles to fill them in. Then if we wanted to figure out angles five, six, seven, and eight, we could use our other properties. So one is a corresponding angle with five, five is vertical to eight, five and six are supplementary, or two and six are corresponding. There's many ways we could get to fill in the other missing values. Example three, find missing angle measures. Mrs. Kumar designed the bookcase shown. Line A is parallel to line B. If the measure of angle 2 is 105 degrees, find the measure of angle 6 and the measure of angle 3. Justify your answer. So part A, find the measure of angle 6. First, it tells us that A and B are parallel. That's going to be important because now we can use alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding, vertical, supplementary, all of those properties. So angle 2 it tells us in the problem that that's 105 degrees. If I want to find the measure of angle 6, it's right next to it. So I'm going to use the fact that because they're on the same line, they're going to be supplementary, meaning they're going to add to 180. So if I want to figure out the measure of angle 6, I'm just going to subtract 105 from 180, and I can figure out that Angle 6 is 75 degrees. Now, for part B, if I want to find the measure of angle 3, there's a couple different options. But the quickest way is to know that angle 6 and angle 3 are alternate interior angles. They're inside the parallel and on opposite sides of the transversal. So since they're alternate interior, their measures are equal. So if the measure of angle 6 was 75, then the measure of angle 3 also must be 75. Check your understanding. Read through the situation. Find the measures of angles 1 and 2. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said... The measure of angle 1 is 145 degrees, where the measure of angle 2 is 35. Let's see how to get that. 
So they tell us angle 7 is 35. So if angle 7 is 35, I'm going to use vertical angles first. Angle 6 must be 35. Now I can just jump right to angle 2 with corresponding angles. They're in the same position. So 6 and 2 are corresponding, meaning 2 is 35. Then 2 and 1 are going to be supplementary. So if I do 180 minus 35, I get 145. We could have also used supplementary right away. 5 and 7 are supplementary. I could have said this was 145 and then used corresponding for the 5 and 1. Again, many different ways to figure out the missing angles. Use what you need to. Example 4. Find missing angle measures. In the figure, line M is parallel to line N and line Q is perpendicular to line P. The measure of angle 1 is 40 degrees. What is the measure of angle 7? So first I'm going to write that this is 40, tells us in the problem, and I'm actually going to write in that box that this is 90. So perpendicular make 90 degree angles. So step one, let's find angle six. If we're looking at this closely, we can fill in a bunch of different things, but angle one and angle six actually form a special angle pair. Now, it's kind of hard to see here because of that line of Q, but we have angle one and angle six on this transversal of P and outside of N and M. So they are alternate exterior angles, which means if 1 is 40, then 6 is also 40. If you were going through this problem and didn't notice that, there are other ways to get to this final answer. So knowing that 6 is 40, now we can find angle 7. So angle 6, angle 7, and then our 90 degree angle, those three angles together form a straight line meaning they're supplementary. So the sum of their measures is 180. We know angle 6 is 40, and then angle 8 was our right angle, so it's 90. Those two together are 130. So subtracting 130 from both sides to solve our equation for the measure of angle 7, it must be 50 degrees. Check your understanding. Use the figure below and the information provided to find the measure of angle four. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said the measure of angle four is 35 degrees. Angle seven is 125, and I'm looking to figure out the measure of angle four. I'm going to use some properties to get there. So first, I know 10 and 7 make my 180 degree angle. So 10 must be 55. So those add up to 180. 10 and 3 are alternate interior angles. They're inside my parallel. So this must also be 55. Then angle 5, angle 3, and angle 4. This is 90. 90 plus 55 is 145. So what's left to get to 180? It must be 35. There may have been other ways to get there as well, and however you get it is fine.